evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is, uh, should be a very uncomplicated one for you, just a, a money decision uh, to make. Uh, quite simply, I'm, I'm here before you to request your authorization to expend funds out of uh, the economic development account, which is an account which is uh, uh, the, under your jurisdiction, and it's an account that uh, is newly funded by the, uh, the $5,000 per alcohol license fees uh, that are collected um, associated with the Patriot Place related licenses. You got it. You got it. Uh, so that's the, that's the long and the short what I'll be asking you for. The, the background uh, in brief is that um, over a couple of years ago, uh, your board authorized a, a committee, a subcommittee to study how we would uh, move forward with the town's website to uh, enhance it and make it everything that it could be. Uh, that committee was chaired by uh, former selectman uh, Bob Hickey, and uh, we, uh, I was on the committee along with our IT director, Mike Mackey, and several other um, uh, community uh, individuals and after uh, quite some time of study we came back with a recommendation which was accepted by this board uh, to move ahead uh, with a, a professional uh, website company that makes a market in developing municipal websites. So although the recommendation was accepted by the board and we had made some strides, funding was the issue. Uh, we were only able to sort of do a piece of it. Uh, we were unable to fund the development of the web website in the FY08 or the FY09 uh, budgets, despite it you know, being on a, on a short priority list. Um, so what we have been able to do to date um, is to uh, fund via the Patriot Place revolving account uh, the development of the inspection department's pages of the website. And the rationale to be able to do that was that there was there's a tremendous amount of workload that's being driven to that department in order to bring the Patriot Place development online. Um, and the development of that site would streamline a lot of the information requests and how they manage their contacts. So that, um, that was phase, phase one, and we have that up and running, and it's working well, and um, the inspection department uh, enjoys the use of it, and we have a, a nice new presence, but we still have the old site, so we're sort of half, halfway there. If you go to the current site and you click on the inspection department, you'll get to um, the new site. At, because of the funding issue, the contract that we signed with the selected vendor through the quote process, Virtual Town Hall, we, we set up the contract as a two-tiered contract. The first tier, uh, which was funded through the Patriot Place uh, revolving account uh, to the tune of uh, $4,250, um, that, that was funded. And the second piece that was not funded, we, they, we still got a contract price from Virtual Town Hall to complete the development of all of the other department uh, pages, which is almost another two dozen departments that we would have to develop the site for um, at a cost of $6,495. So that's the piece that we've been unable to fund to date. And um, I'm here to request that we tap the economic development account, which is an account that was established by legislation associated with the Patriot Place liquor licenses, uh, that, that those funds, uh, those $5,000 per licenses, get deposited into this account and used for economic development purposes. I've spoken to uh, Jay Barrows and his aide, Mike Berry, actually before the legislation was ultimately passed because of the new condition that was brought up that we actually had to divert the money into a fund like this to get clarity on what, per what the legitimate purposes would have to be, what requirements have to be met in order to, um, to spend those funds. And the legislation is silent on a definition of economic development, and therefore um, it was interpreted uh, uh, by uh, Jay and Mike that it would be a local determination as to whether or not uh, purpose meets economic development criteria. I'm contending that this does for a variety of reasons. Um, I receive contacts about the website. Um, specifically, I'll highlight I get contacts from real estate agents in town who complain uh, vigorously to me about the state of the website. It's, it doesn't help them to sell residential and commercial property in town. Um, and, uh, and, and, and they would like to have something like that, like so if you actually could do a, a search online and search uh, many of our, uh, in fact, most of our surrounding towns, they do have uh, websites uh, that are um, that are more modern than ours, that are maintained, have current content, and many of which have been developed by Virtual Town Hall. In addition to that, um, there's another website in town uh, <coughs> that has, uh, in, in the past, sprouted up to serve the, the void that, um, that the, the town of Foxborough has been unable to fill. It's uh, Foxborough MA Online. 
and there are um, almost two dozen um, community groups, many nonprofit, that have um, used that website um, as their uh, central presence or one of their central presences in the community. Um, and other town departments have tried to latch on to it as well. But it's not the official town website, and unfortunately that website's all going dark. Uh, by the end of August. They're going out of business. And, and they've also, they're aware of this project. They're anxious for us to get this funded and completed because they would like to have a new home so they don't lose their presence in, in our community because so many of, as everybody on this, around this table knows, so many of these community groups and nonprofit groups really make up the fabric of the community and do so many things, even economically for the community, that, uh, that, the, that the government doesn't, uh, doesn't provide uh, directly. Um, I also have the planning, um, the, our planning director, Mark Resnick, has also approached me. He's very anxious to see this site developed, and um, that department is one uh, that is probably the closest that we have to, you know, being an economic, driving economic activity in the community. So it's for those reasons that I uh, fully believe and support that funding this $6,495 to complete the development's website um, is a legitimate economic development purpose, and I would um, suggest that the board vote to authorize expenditure out of this account. There's currently about $30,000 in the account today. And I'm going to make a motion that the board of selectmen allow $6,495 from the EDA fund to support phase two of the town's website project. Second. Any discussion? Randy, have you given any thought to how we're going to manage this on a day-to-day -day basis? Yes. Can you share with us what your thoughts are? Absolutely. Uh, one of the primary reasons where the, the committee landed on going with a professional website company uh, rather than an independent, and there are many good independents um, right in, in our own community, um, but the reason to go with a professional uh, you know, website development company with this particular company has hundreds of municipal sites, more than a hundred in Massachusetts alone. They manage some of the state's websites as well and then others across New England. What they've done is they've got it down to a science. It's really a cookie cutter approach. And um, not only do they host the, the server and the hardware and they maintain its security, but they have developed very user-friendly, easy uh, to use tools in order to update content. That's, you know, in the past for us, that's been, a, been an issue. It's do we have to hire an independent to go out and get our content onto the site? Certainly the people with the site that we have, um, the administrators across the town aren't techno savvy enough to get that content up there. But with the tools that Virtual Town Hall has developed, it's as simple that this, oh, the only skills that you need is to be able to type text uh, into an email um, and then a copy and paste uh, a document or an image into an email, and then the email itself is directed right to the point, the page on the website. Of course, it's all security controlled. You're, if you're an administrator for a particular department, you would only have access to be able to update content for your department. So it's very easy, very user friendly, and that was one of the key selling points for, for doing this is that, you know, is this going to be an increased burden on all of the departments? But it's, uh, it's, it was the belief of the committee that the reduction in traffic count or phone calls or contacts uh, would probably be taken up by the additional administrative work of actually getting content up on the site. So it's probably going to be a wash, but in today's day and age, you know, most people have come to expect that they can uh, interact with their, their government or any business entity uh, via the Internet. Uh, I, I think that's an interesting approach. It, it, it sounds to me that each department will be responsible for its own upgrading, but it, uh, as you become familiar with municipal sites, I think you find that if they're not regularly updated, they quickly become stale. Right. Is it fair to say that ultimately the, if the if particular department's not maintaining its site and updating it on a regular basis, that the town manager's office would then take it upon itself to say, department, it's time to upgrade? The reason I say some uh, places with websites will designate one individual within the town and the departments will then initiate the change and the individual will make it. And that's not really what we're contemplating. Yeah, here it's, it's really each department um, is, is really being uh, asked to uh, maintain and service 
their own area, and, and it'll be it'll become somewhat of a competitive thing from my perspective. When I would suspect, based on the feedback that I get from um, you know various department heads, I believe I know I've heard from the majority of the department heads that want. Um, to have us have a, have a, a presence, a web presence for them that they can maintain, and and if there are uh, a couple that are in, less inclined to put the effort uh, into it, um, you know they'll, um, you know it'll it'll just be a, a poor comparison as people go through the site and see who's really developed content and who hasn't, and they'll continue to get contacted and you know in the way they have in the past. But I think there'll be a, a subtle pressure for those departments to. Uh, to, to maintain it that might be disinclined to do it. But once they find how easy it, it is to do, and our intent is to bring everybody in, um, you know, through a, in, in a group process to orient them to the project and to the training um, and into the initial development of the content. There's a fair amount of work to do there, is to initially pull in the content. I mean, there have been, there are rogue sites that have been set up as well. And so uh, we want, we don't want to lose any of that. We want to bring all of that, all of that in. So. Many departments already have uh, their own, you know, unofficial presence. So we, we want to bring that all in under one, one roof. Okay, thank you. Any more discussion? Just Paul? quickly, Mike. I, Jim, I think, makes a good point. Any, you know, we all know the death knell of any website is, is stale mm -hmm. content. And um, I think with any embrace of new technology, um, there has to be some behavioral changes, too, and, and organizational issues that, that are going to arise. So, um, if everybody's on board and, and, and Andy, you know, you're confident that the that the different department heads are going to do it, I love it. I mean, I'm going to be like a, a kid with a new toy, I think, when this comes up. I went on, after I, I looked at your memo today, uh, Randy, I went on to that URL for the mm -hmm. inspections department right. and, you know, started clicking the, the links on the left side saying, oh, <coughs> with that close, you know, yeah, that's, it could only that's be there for each other department. Right. My one question is, is do we have any, uh, with this quote and, and what we're asking uh, VTH to do, is there any email accounts or sub accounts or anything that are going to be set up with that? In we're, other words, can the Board of Selectmen, uh, can we have email accounts where people could, could go in and contact us directly? Or? I mean, we can, um, we have our, uh, that's a separate project, so the short answer is that's currently not contemplated within this. It is a, a service that, that can be offered by Virtual Town Hall. They do offer that. We currently have, um, you know, separate, you know, mail servers, so that would be, you know, um, a, a, a change to do that. Certainly, we could establish email accounts even within the um, with, with the existing infrastructure that we have. You know, for uh, for board members, if we wanted to, it would be somewhat kludgy, but it's it's something that we can evolve to. Right. Um, but it's it's currently not in the, not in the scope of the project. It's interesting to see we can currently do it. I think you know maybe in the in the future on a night where the agendas a little bit lighter than than some other nights, we could have that. Discussion. I think it's probably a pretty good policy discussion, as far as contact into the office and, and you know setting up email accounts for the for the board members. It, it's important, I think, to move in that direction. I agree. Linda. No, I think it's about time. I you know I mean in my sp statement when I was going for this job that you know I think it's important that we get up with the Joneses and we're not. So um, you know I mean. Obviously, the JC's website that I visit all the time is, you know, really surpasses us, and it shouldn't. <laughs> it really shouldn't. You know, the town should come first, and um, I, I thank you guys for putting the work in it and, and finding the funding for it finally. Well, I, I uh, have to tip the hat to the former committee members. I mean, this is a, an old committee. I'm right. a select, former select, and uh, Bob Hickey uh, championed the idea. We had a lot of other uh, uh, members, uh, Eric uh, Avedon from the, from the um, health committee, uh, Mike Mackey, the IS team, and I'm going to forget uh, others. But I do have to give credit to Jack Offalette. If you did go on and see the inspections website, you'll see this rotating panoramic views um, of the town, and those are photos taken by Jack Offalette. Um, and uh, you know, given to us to, to populate his banners, and so I will, I'll probably be tapping him again at some point, so we can uh, keep uh, more panoramic views uh, on our on our homepage. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Randy. So, Buck Rogers, blasting into the 21st century. It's about time. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have a choice here to run through action. Well, Mr. Pelican stands.
Right? I mean, I think we can go over to action in 10 minutes. Yeah, we'll be quick. You yeah. know, and that way we can release Frank and his, all his, uh, for his TV, you know, the cable actor. So, Andy, I guess we're going to jet, jet for these. So what? Blanket motion? <laughs> <laughs> I tried. All right, hit us, Andy. Uh, we've got uh, a couple sets of minutes to approve on uh, item one. News of the August 12th meeting. Anybody have a problem with the minutes of August 12th? James. At um, page three, Pauline, discussion of town council RFPs. Line three, that first statement was Andy's. Okay. Where it says Jim Thrasher said. Yeah, that was Andrews. Right. <clears throat> Um, top of page four. I, I believe that where you said line two would be, I think it's would not be. That's a separate charge. <laughs> line four? Line two. Oh, okay. Would not be in. Anything else? Oh. Motion to accept the minutes of August 12th as amended. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Andy? Also, the uh, board of select on cable advisory committee meeting of August 18th. Anybody with uh, regards to the minutes? Okay. Make a motion we approve the minutes of the special board of select meeting of cable advisory committee August 18th, 2008. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Five old point. <coughs> okay, Andy. Item two, we have two legal invoices to pay. Uh, one's for Labor Council for the month of July. Uh, amount of $720. I recommend approval. Um, and we'll that we approve the invoice for Collins, Langren, and Pelican for seven hundred and twenty dollars. Yes. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Five old polling. Another one there, Andy. Uh, Peter Epstein, special counsel for the cable TV negotiating committee. Last <coughs> submitted his invoice through July fifteenth, two thousand nine hundred sixty dollars. I move that we accept and pay the invoice submitted from Peter Epstein in the amount of $2,960. Second. As dated. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, Andy. Uh, Jerry Sorolo, library director, has requested the board accept this check. It's a gift donation to the library uh, from the Friends of Boyden Library to be used for the materials replacement fund in the amount of five hundred dollars. Okay. Make a motion to accept the five hundred dollar donation from Friends of Boyden Library. Second. For five hundred dollars. Yeah. Second by Linda. All in favor? Aye. 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 There we go. Item four, you have two license applications uh, submitted uh, from Cadoba Mexican Grill at Patriot Place. Uh, only intends to serve food there. So they're asking for a common vigilance license for the food service and a seven-day entertainment license. Want to handle the motion separately or together? Se separately. Mr. Okay. Chairman, I move we uh, grant the common vigilance license to Cudoba Mexican Grill, one Patriot Place. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I move that we accept the seven-day entertainment license application from Adoba Mexican Grill, dated August 14th. Second. All those in favor? Aye. <coughs> Item five, we have a request from Billy Cunningham from Operating Theater requesting two one-day wine and malt beverage licenses. Uh, the two events, one on uh, September 5th for the Knight Family Benefit, 
and one on September 6th for the Woodis Memorial Scholarship Fund. Make a motion to request, um, give a one-day wine and malt beverage license for the following dates at the Orpheum Cinema, Knight's Family Benefit at 9508, and Withers Memorial Scholarship on 9608. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? All right. Item 6, Diane Horton, 62 Summit Street, has submitted a committee appointment request form to serve on the Cultural Council. She has prior years of service on the Council and would like to be reappointed. We have several vacancies. It's a three-year appointment. The motion to accept, uh, to appoint Diane Horton to the Cultural Council for another term. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Seven is, is uh, a notice from the Recreation Board that uh, Scott O'Donnell has submitted a letter of resignation to the board, and the board is uh, recommending to fill this vacancy by appointing Heather Hardy uh, to the Recreation Board. Do the resignation for us? Yeah. Mr. Chairman, I move we accept the resignation of Member Scott O'Donnell from the Recreation Department uh, and thank him for his service. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, I move that we appoint Heather Harding to the Board of Recreation. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Item 8, you have a Hackey's license renewal application from James Norcourt of 12 Village Way, Norton, Mass. Uh, he drives for East Coast Limo. The application form has been reviewed by Deputy Chief Chandler and has been approved. Um, I'd like to move that we approve the Hackey license renewal for James Norcott. Second. Mm -hmm. All seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Paul, Paul Feeney seconded that. Paul Morton. Is it Paul Morton? My hearing's fine. Yeah. Okay. Item 9, the, uh, Jim Finn. Uh, Adjutant for the Foster American Legion Post 93 has invited the board to attend uh, the uh, <coughs> installation of officers on September 4th at 7 p.m. If anybody can make that, just contact our office. Hope Sandra can um, let us know. Let them know, okay? Okay, Andy. Uh, I'm trying to a letter from John Lovely, chairman of the uh, Board of Managers from the YMCA asking the board's approval for their uh, scheduled uh, YMCA annual sixth road race, uh, which is scheduled for September 28th, the five kilometer race. Proceeds from the race will be divided between the YMCA Reach Outlet for Youth Scholarship Program and a memorial fund in honor of Jackie Thomas. Motion to permit the uh, sixth annual Foxborough Road Race on September 28th. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Five. Five, Jan and Andy? Item 11 is an invitation to the board to uh, designate one of its members to attend a meeting in Taunton on September 18th. Uh, it, it's a meeting of the Southeast Regional Task Force on Casino Impacts. Uh, they're, they're looking at a 25 mile radius area. Uh, Middleborough? Uh, Middleborough Casino proposal when they're invited people, uh, elected officials from this community to attend this, this meeting. Is it more of just an informative meeting? You don't have any. No, it's, it's, it's important to know too um, before we start getting a ton of calls. That it says right here uh, we are not for or against gambling as a group. We are comprised of selectmen and one mayor with a representative from each community designated to attend meetings. So. Yeah, I mean, it's a task force, it looks like a mm -hmm. fact-finding group. All right, so if a board member can make that, please contact Sandy, <coughs> and we'll send a um, acknowledgement, please. Andy? Item 12 is an uh, informational memo that the Mass Music Association <coughs> sent to us uh, concerning the third annual statewide essay contest for sixth graders. Uh, 
I've talked to the superintendent of schools about this, and he's reviewing the information. He's going to go over with their curriculum director and get back to us. That'd be great. They look, they look interested. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, I think it's very interested, <clears throat> very interesting to have a sixth grader give their views on if I were elected leader of my community, I would make a difference by. I, I really think that's very cool. Mm. Very cool. Maybe the senior, the high school seniors do a uh, their class player will be on the board of selectmen this year. Could be, <laughs> could be future leaders out there. I think it's, I think it's very cool. Think it's awesome. This is only for sixth graders, so this, this project here. Oh, yeah. yeah. But I, I, I think we'll get a positive response from yeah. the school department. No, I think it's great. I think it okay. is. 13 <coughs> is the approval of payment of the taxes agreement with the housing authority. Uh, this involves <coughs> two units that are on Baker Street. Uh, 68A and 68B Baker Street. It was in history back in 2003, the former Board of Selectmen signed the agreement with the Housing Authority to bring in this housing under this grant. Uh, chapter 6 something, 689 program. And the conditions of the grant is that uh, the town would agree to pay some of taxes for these units that were built. It's nothing that's pertaining to the last in the hall, okay. No, just these okay. two yeah. at this location. Okay. It, it, so it's, it's under the bedroom the, formula, it, yeah. so they're not going to pay full taxes at all. But was but this what John Mitchell was talking about? That, no, this is a, this a, a is prior agreement. This it's is not a changing. No, this is a prior agreement. agreement. Oh, okay. Okay. Right. okay. I'll, I'll just so move. For a second. Second. All those in favor? All right. And then last, last one is informative, Andy. Right, so we call from the planning board uh, on a hearing from September 11th uh, regarding the uh, frontage waiver for property at 185 Main Street. All right, um, under all the new business, real quick, I got, uh, we all got an email from Sandy about um, a resident on 12th Bates Road. Yeah. Set up for now. I, I went there Friday. She wasn't home. Sorry. What did you say? Uh, we all got an email about a complaint of the road conditions. And I just happened to walk in the office on Friday. What, what road? Bates Road. Okay. It's off Bicknell, which is off of 106, down towards the Plainville line, before South Street comes back I out. I call it now. And I met with uh, the couple there. I went there Friday, they weren't home. I went there Sunday, they were home. I talked to them. I contacted the highway superintendent. He got back to me Monday morning. I met with him and his superintendent, Mr. Sobo, there. And we are working on that. It's a, it, the situation is pretty drastic. And uh, it also includes water and sewer because there's been three or four water main breaks there. That's why it's divided and it's, it's really in deplorable condition. So. Um, Mr. Swanson informed me that he would get back in touch with the water department and then they would bring me up to date on what was going to happen and when. If anything, but I'm sure something will happen. That's all I have to. Oh, and one more thing. Mr. Kaz Barrett and I put in the, the last simple touch. It's, it's been really pushed by Bill. I've been preoccupied on the, uh, the town hall um, renovation. And, and now it's going to, the next meeting will bring you to a full report on that. It's, it's pretty simple. We figured it out pretty simple. So. Anybody else got any new or old business? Just want to remind folks that we're going to be talking on the 9th about the water and sewer. Um, Commissioner, are going to come back in here and have further discussions, right? Yep, yep. And it's a good point. Uh, let's be informed. And um, it, it's a big deal. The water and sewer is a big deal for this town, and it's once again come up. So I, I appreciate it. Appreciate you bringing that up. Yeah. Andy, uh, under new business, a, a couple of appointments for the board to make. As you may recall, uh, several weeks ago, when we met the school committee uh, to listen to an update on the Foxville High School roof project and other renovations. Uh, they've been in constant contact with the Massachusetts State Building Assistance Authority, and. Uh, we need to put additional people on the permanent building committee for the school project. And uh, as of that meeting, this, this list of names wasn't finalized. Last night, the school committee authorized Larry Harrington to serve on this, this committee. So I have four names for the board to appoint as ex officio members to the building committee. 
uh, Larry Harrington from the school committee, Superintendent Chris Marnus, uh, Paul, Jackson. Paul Jackson, and Jeff Theodorus. I make, uh, go ahead, Linda. Yeah, yeah, I move that we um, appoint Larry Harrington, Paul Jackson, Jeff Theos, and Chris Mattis to the permanent, permanent building committee. Permanent municipal building committee. Oh, okay, the permanent municipal building committee. Right. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 They'll do a great job. I know they will. Under all business, Mark? Yes, sir. Mr. Feeney, you're up. We have a couple of subcommittee meetings coming up um, next week. <clears throat> Actually, next week and the week after. Wednesday, September 3rd at 8 p.m. will be the uh, Dog Park uh, Site Location Committee. Um, I'll be reaching out to everybody over the next couple of days just to make sure all interested parties are welcome to attend. It's an open meeting. I believe Sandra posted it for Wednesday, September 3rd at 8 p.m. in this room. Uh, also, the Renewable Energy Advisory Committee uh, will have a meeting Wednesday, September 10th at 7 p.m. in this room. Uh, and I'm hoping to have the Mass Tech Collaborative, uh, who's kind of the quasi-public agency that the state deals with in, in managing a lot of the funds for um, looking at different renewable energy sources and, and, and grants and stuff like that. So Wednesday, September 3rd, Dog Park uh, uh, Location Committee and the Renewable Energy Advisory Committee on Wednesday, September 10th, 7 p.m. Maybe we can throw a turbine in this new dam if the town moves forward with it. I like you thinking. And get some revolving funds to operate it and maintain it in the future. Yeah, a, wood, a, a mill, yeah. That's what I was thinking. Hey, I'll build it myself. A water mill. <laughs> Actually, you know, quick tidbit. Back in the 1900s, when people did build those all these private dams to, to generate their own electricity, the Mass Electric, or the Edison at the time, went to legislation. They lobbied a law that said you could not pass a wire under or over any existing wires. Therefore, they never came to fruition. One of them, historically, is the Plimpton Dam in Walpole, which makes that dam look like uh, a matchbox. Yeah, that's what they mean. So, and Mr. Plimpton, General George Plimpton, moved his family out of town to New York after that. It was disgusting. So, now we can do it because the law has been abolished. Keep going, man. I'm impressed. It's like story time. Good. <laughs> I'm learning. Keep going. We need a pillow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, motion to adjourn regular session to go in executive session to discuss release of executive session minutes and contract negotiations. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Roll call. Roll call vote. James? Yes. Paul? Yes. Paul Feeney? Yes. Mark Selvin? Yes. Linda Walsh? Yes. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Frank. Thanks, Thank you, everybody. Frank.